So in this video, this is the look that I'm doing. I only did one hand. This is an acrylic sculpted set. And as you can see, I have a super duper high apex and I wanted to experiment with that look today. So I went a little bit spooky with the black Hello Kitties and these new gels are from Model Ones. I'll be showing them to you guys. And I'll be doing a little bit of an unboxing of just a bunch of stuff that's new from Model Ones. These are some nail forms that I got from them and I think this newer stuff is going to be posted on their website on October 1st. To show me what's in the other side of inhibition No apologies my baby I tell you do cause I'm feeling so But first, I want to give a Quiet Gang notification gang shout out to Sheila Brown, Lies is a Fantasy, Danae Green, and Camila Toast. Thank you guys so much for the first four to comment on my last video. Thank you so much to everyone who tries to make these videos and shout out to the Premiere Squad. But you'll be there, ready to rescue me if I go out of track. You can get away with it. Cause you make me love my imperfections Answer all my questions Just to show me What's on the other side of innovation No apologies, my baby I do your door cause I'm feeling so So yeah, these are some swatches of some pre-existing Model 1's gel polishes that they've always had on the site. I think they just sent me these colors because they're kind of Halloween themed. Model 1 gel polishes are some of my absolute favorite, especially their white and their black. I reach for it all the time. Alright, so that's how you put on a nail form. I kind of just quickly went through that. So we're going to do a detailed step-by-step -step sculpting with their clear acrylic from Model 1's. I'm actually using Monomer from The Red, and this is a Model 1's synthetic aquarium brush. I want a really high apex on my nails. I'm gonna be applying like most of my beads towards the back end of the nail.
I talk about bead consistency in my first acrylic for beginner series. I also talk about how to clean your brush and just in general, how to handle your brush and some tips and tricks about application in general that might help you on your way. The second video was focusing all on how to do your um, dominant hand using your non-dominant hand, which is such a tricky thing to do when you're getting started. So yeah, this one is just, we're just really looking at the forms today. I want you guys to notice when we get to my pinky nail that I actually have a broken pinky nail. The bottom half of my pinky nail kind of just like ripped off. I forget what happened. I really don't remember what happened. <laughs> But um, it's not awful, but it's kind of looking as though it were a bitten nail because it's just so short. Usually stuff like this grows out. It's nothing to really worry about, but you do want to use a form on nails that don't have a free edge. And I'll be slowly, step by step, showing you guys how I put that form on my broken nail. As y'all can see, I apply very big beads. I don't really do too many little beads. So I like to just get the whole thing done really quick. So I don't really care where I'm placing it on the form. It never really made a difference to me. But if you are working with um, maybe like a fast set monomer, or if you're working in small beads layer by layer or something like that, maybe you do wanna make the free edge first, like a thin platform base. You even have the option of removing the form at that point you can um, sometimes see the shape of the nail a lot better. That's something I did a lot when I was starting out with forms is I would over apply like crazy because the perspective was just different looking at my nail with the form on it. It just looked a little different to me. So I would just keep applying over and over. So today my nails are a little bit thicker, but that's on purpose because I am trying to go for that like super high apex. I'll try to insert some pictures of what I have in my mind's eye.
like a bass guitar Simmer down and mess me up Tripping like I'm Jimmy at Woodstock And I drum me around and go right forward Shivers down my spine So you guys just saw me take down the bulk on my nails and hand file and buff. I never really buff all the time, but I used that McCart block buffer and it was really good to take the scratches out of my nails and I think that's something that's good to do when you're painting on top of some nails because those scratches can kind of be a little bit obvious when you're using a gel polish. So I'll talk a little bit about these pot gels. They are super pigmented. Like they're so pigmented that I had to clean off my brush in acetone like in between every color because they were staining the brush. It was that pigmented. They're very jelly. And I think they build up to the perfect coverage. They're not too full coverage. They're not too thin. They're not too jelly. Um, I love these. I like the color choices. I really get the vibes. Like they did a really good job with these. This is something I would buy. If anyone remembers like the candy floss video from a really long time ago, or what is it called? There's these gel polishes that I got to review. And I was so excited about them because they looked like birthday cake sprinkle nails and they looked like candy. I think the, I think the um, type of gel polish was called a cheese candy. Yeah, it was called cheese candy gel and I just thought it was so cute. Like it was so, so, so cute to me. And that's kind of what this is giving me, especially that index finger. Oh, and I was super out of frame right here on this purple nail. So I just tried to zoom in to make it better, but it didn't really make it better.
so after that I just top coated my nails to get rid of that tacky layer but I'm using a ton of top coat to float over because these are some chunky glitters that I want to kind of encapsulate and this did the job my nails were smooth on top everything looked really good however because it was so much top coat I did lose shape on the sidewall area so that's what I'm gonna refile again Um, so this will help with that and you can't really just leave it like that because when you file it you're exposing the paint like it can chip off a lot easier because you just filed through it and water can kind of seep in and it can start rippling and cracking and lifting so you do need to seal it in again but this this layer of top coat that I'm applying here is very thin And then the last thing I did is some random bling. I just kind of threw these things on here and I'm using the McCart rhinestone gel. This is amazing for bling, you guys. Since I got this, it's been nonstop and I haven't, I don't even feel like I'm gonna run out of it. Like this is the same bottle that I've always had since I first got it and nothing ever pops off with this stuff. It's the truth and there's no tacky layer. You can top coat your nails and then do the bling right after. Um, it's amazing, so highly recommend. Oh, and my stone picker tool is from Michaels, by the way. I think I saw someone ask about it in the last video. So yeah, y'all, this is the final result. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today and I will see you guys in the next one. Love you, bye.